everyone welcome to notice tonight the show that decodes the region i am wasbir hussain viewers what is more unacceptable names of suspected foreign nationals appearing in the nrc or names of genuine indians left out of the nrc to me both are equally unacceptable it is not a question of how many it is not a question of numbers but as the july 31 deadline for publication of the final nrc draws near it has become clear that the quality of investigation by the little known border wing of the assam police has not been up to the mark in a number of cases now well weeks after former army man mohammed sanaullah walked out from the detention center it was the turn of the elderly madhubala mandal to come out free from the detention center in kokrajhar then of course it was the turn of rangmala sarkar there are lots of others i'll tell the names amila saha nabin barman to name a few now madhubala mandal was mistaken as madhubala for madhubala das and he had to spend 3 years in jail who is going to give back the poor madhubala mandal the 3 years of her life spent in misery away from her family if it was the result of a botched investigation will there now be a probe to find out who within the border police was responsible for this goof up and will there be any action taken now take the case of romila sarkar who came out of the detention center after 2 years in the meantime ladies and gentlemen she had lost her 5 year old son so who is going to take care of the miseries of this people question also arises is there now need for foreigners tribunals to also gear up and ensure their verdict is full proof after all if an indian can be passed off as a foreigner who knows foreigners too can be passed off as indians we are not generalizing we are not questioning the credibility of the tribunals we are aware there is this is a mega exercise that in a mega exercise like this there can be human errors all we are saying is there and must is there a need for accountability or not for possible casual approach on the part of the authorities at various levels cannot be tolerated to discuss this issue i am joined by asu chief advisor dr samujjal bhattacharya former mp mr karif shalia is with me in the studios i have also professor okhil ranjan datta from guwahati university joining me is assam bjp spokesman mr rupam goswami also with me is professor prasenjit biswas from northeastern hill university and i also have advocate sayed burhanur rahman uh, who is an advocate at the guwahati high court but joining me from lakhimpur this evening gentlemen welcome to northeast tonight now the issue is i'll start with rupam goswami the assam bjp spokesman uh, rupam goswami it's not a question of numbers <coughs> it's a question of misery being faced by genuine indian citizens yes you and i and everybody in this panel everybody in assam wants that name all foreign nationals should be detected they should be identified they should be deported eventually but all of us also want that no indian citizen should be subjected to any kind of harassment in the name of detection of bangladeshis now the issue is mohammed sanaullah then it was madhubala mandal who has come out after 3 years the old lady you know then today a lady rongmala sarkar you know he was mistaken for some other sarkar all because of the assam border police's botched investigation she lost her 5 year old son then it was amila saha you know another mistaken identity nabin barman now who is going to take accountability is the bjp as the state government will you demand a thorough probe into the affairs of the border police what is going on i am not generalizing the entire border police also but should not the assam police or the assam government order an inquiry uh well was be the whole nrc is a game of documents <clears throat> so documents is very important to include your name in the nrc previously the locals those who think they are indians the least bothered about the documentation mm -hmm. in fact <clears throat> our local peoples like especially 
the people, uh, tribal peoples in Assam. And we are not so much serious about our documentations. As because the NRC... No, no, my, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Rupam Goswami. My question is not about NRC and okay, documentation. I know, I know, I know. My question is about mistaken identity exactly. by the border police who have faulted on the investigation, at least in the cases which I have cited because of which these people, after languishing in the detention center for two to three years, have now been set free by the courts. No, these, these are related to this because if someone has been uh, put in a detention camp, definitely... It's nothing to do with NRC, he, but... No, obviously, but he or she has lapse of maybe of documents. I don't okay, know. Okay, uh, Prasenjit Biswas, the BJP spokesman, uh, has to defend his government. That is uh, understandable, but you cannot defend, defend the indefensible. Prasenjit Biswas, the issue is you do a goof up in your investigation, then you send an Indian national to jail, then the same court, based on the same documents, release you on bail after three years. Uh, now, what is going on? This It's not a question of numbers. I've said in my opening remarks, it is not a question of numbers. It's not a question of five or ten. It's a question of misery suffered by these people. This lady, Romila Sarkar, who was released today, had lost her five-year-old son. And, and now it has been proved that she's an Indian national. And the same set of documents, by the way. Prasenjit. Sure. Yes. Yes. The case of Madhubala Mandal is an eye opener. And uh, in, in case of Silchar, the case of 102 year old Chandradhar Das, who has been given bail now, has been found to be Indian citizen in every respect. So why such shabby inquiry that results into a massive human rights violation? And this is happening in out of 1200 cases, maybe 50% of the cases are of this kind. Therefore, it's a serious case of violation of legal norms and human rights both. Okay. And people who are okay. victimized and okay. who have suffered because of okay. that, I, they I, deserve adequate compensation by the state. Two points you have made in your opening remarks, Prasenjit Biswas. You are saying that this is an issue of human rights and you are demanding compensation. Okay, uh, you know, as Rupam Goswami is saying that, you know, basically it's a question of documents. It's all a game of documents. That's fine. We are not talking about the NRC. These are two separate things. Uh, now, at the end of the day, my question is, suppose the border police has goofed up in the investigation in whatever number of cases. But what about the tribunals? The, the tribunals will say, oh, I based our judgment on the basis of the investigation by the Assam police. Take the case of Sanaullah. Now, Sanaullah is claiming, here is a man who is claiming that he has served 30 years in the Indian Army. All the tribunal had to do was to ask the SP to get the details from the Indian Army. Simple. Get hold of his passport. Uh, and, and not depend on only the investigation by the police. Same is the case, whatever police have come up with some uh, woman, in case of mistaken identity, you immediately say, yes, this is Madhubala Mandal and you send to detention camp. Now, does it not reflect on the casual manner in which some of the cases in the tribunals are heard? I am emphasizing some. I am not generalizing the uh, tribunals. I am not also questioning the credibility of the tribunals. Okay, Ranjan, the third, See, your remarks. I will give you a few very important historic judgments <coughs> on it. Uh, Justice Salamasar Vardik, uh, uh, Justice Salamasar had given the verdict in Muslim Mandal versus Union in, of India case uh, 2010. That's a very interesting case where Muslim Mandal was declared as a foreigner and subsequently probably he was, not, uh, you know, uh, declared to be an Indian. Now, in that particular case, there two things have been, two particular sentences or phrases have been used, burden of proof. When the uh, foreigners tribunal examines somebody, whether he is or he is, for a, he or she is a foreigner or not, the burden of proof lies on the accused. But Justice Salemasso has very categorically yeah. said that there's, there's a shift of burden. It's not necessarily that it is only the accused <coughs> who will take the burden of proof. There is also onus of proof. And that onus of proof lies on the investigating agencies. And in that particular case, so, it has very categorically so been stated. What are you trying to suggest in I'm short? I'm trying to suggest is that even if it is documents, it is not only documents. The, investigate, the uh, investigating agencies has to take it very comprehensively, right. has to take it very seriously Absolutely. before referring the case to the uh, tribunal. Mr. Kirib Chalia, Mr. Kirib Chalia, you know, we are, we are now, you know, at, at, taking into account these five to six cases, they have come up in the public domain. 
it has led to some element of doubt in the minds of the people. Okay, if we are we are now seeing these five to six cases being highlighted in the public domain by the media. Now, people are thinking that, oh, well, if there can be six to seven such cases, and they have seen three to four people already coming out of the detention centers uh, by the, with, uh, uh, in accordance with the due process of law. Uh, that means the court has prima facie found uh, uh, proof that these are Indian nationals, therefore they have granted them bail because this case has to go on for some time before the final clean sheet is given. Now, my question to you, Mr. Kareem Chalia, is that, you know, the Assam government, the government of Mr. Sarbananda Sonwal is a popularly elected government in Assam. Uh, they have got an absolute majority. I mean, not an absolute majority. They've got a very, very clear kind of a majority uh, in 2016. My question is, government of Assam has also been repeatedly saying that not a single Indian should will be harassed. Now, does it not incumbent, is it not incumbent upon the Assam government to order an inquiry? At least, to start with. I'll come to you, Rupam Goswami, for your second set of comments. See, as an opening remark, I must point out that I, I hold no brief from the government. In fact, I'm very, very critical about, uh, uh, about some of the things that have been happening on NRC, if you remember even in earlier discussions here also. But then let me, uh, let me say a word of caution. Uh, let us not, let us not uh, on such a sensitive matter as foreign national, detection of foreign nationals yeah. in a state where lakhs and lakhs of foreigners have come and endangered the very existence of the state. No doubt about finished. that. No, no doubt, doubt about that. So when it is a such a sensitive uh, affair, and when an NRC is, uh, that is a, that's a citizen's register is being prepared in a unique way, in, in, only in Assam, the, 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 it is incumbent upon the administration to be extra judicious, cautious. extra cautious. On that, there can be no two opinions. No two opinions. But, no two but opinions. Can I, can I, can yes. I, can I, I, I just add one more line. You know, it is in the interest of the state itself. <coughs> it is in the interest of NRC itself. It is in the interest of preserving the sanctity of the whole process mm -hmm. and the Supreme Court. Okay. That we don't, while we don't go for any blame game, all right, all but right. we can't condone and we must take certain exemplary Absolutely. steps. Absolutely. Exemplary to find out steps. Where the wrong has exemplary taken place. steps. Otherwise, need of our government otherwise, has to be otherwise more it might nullify nullify the entire process okay. and bring got to it. end the got very, the very, very, very tough got, got action the sense, being got taken. The sense I'm of not your argument <coughs> critical. Got the sense of your argument. I am coming to you, uh, Syed Burhanur Rahman. Uh, I am going to you. I am now joined by ASU advisor, Dr. Samujjal Bhattasarji. Uh, Dr. Samujjal Bhattasarji, uh, you know, the NRC deadline is drawing near. We have 31 days to be precise. But my first question is not on NRC. My opening remarks from you I want. In the last couple of weeks, we have seen Sanaullah, the army man, coming out of detention center. We have seen the old, OK, Samujal Bhattacharji, we have not got the line. Uh, now let me quickly go to, I'm coming to you, Dr. Samujal Bhattacharji. Let's fix the line. Uh, Sayed Burhanur Rahman is an advocate. Uh, Burhanur, you know, in the last couple of weeks, uh, we all know that NRC is a different process and the foreigners' tribunals dealing with is slightly different. It's not one and the same thing. But in the last couple of weeks, we have seen the army man Sanaullah coming out of the detention center. We have seen Madhubala Mandal was a clear case of mistaken identity. Today, we have seen Rongmala Sarkar, another case of mistaken identity, sent to a detention camp as foreigners today came out. In the meantime, she lost her five-year-old son. She was in detention center for two years. Madhuvala was for three years. Then there was the case of Amila Saha. Then Chandra Das, Barak Valley, 102-year-old, uh, who has come out from detention center, Nobin Burman. My question to you, do you think that had the media spotlight not been there, these people would have still been languishing in detention centers or jails despite being Indian nationals? I agree with you on this because media has absolutely played a very crucial role, at least in these uh, cases that you have just mentioned. As far as Sanaullah matter is uh, concerned, I'm involved in that matter, so I can say with uh, great responsibility that in this matter, the Border Police Assam has done a disastrous task because 
it's only on the basis of their investigation report that he was held, uh, his matter was referred to the foreigners tribunal and later on he was held as a foreigner. Now what happened in this matter, all this investigation was a bogus investigation in the sense that he was given only a thumb impression, his, uh, all his um, uh, related informations were also bogus. And uh, he was say, it was uh, said that uh, this person was living uh, in that uh, particular area and his parents' name are also same. Now, as in, they cannot take the plea of mistaken identity simply because yeah. you give me the name of any other person from that locality with the Sanaullah name and his parents' name matching uh, with his parents and okay. his well, wife. Uh, Burhanur, Burhanur, let us, so let us, Burhanur, is doing yes, is, Burhanur, yes, let us, yes. let us not, let us not go into detail. I'm coming to you. We are connected with Samudhal Bhattacharya. I'm coming to you, Samudhal, in a minute. Uh, uh, you know, Burhanur, now you said that the entire entire verdict of the tribunal is based on the, as you say, the wrong investigation by the border police. Now, <coughs> don't you think the foreigners tribunals have no responsibility at all? Yes, as far as, as far as the tribunal is concerned, section 30 of civil procedure code has empowered them to bring out and call out the truth. They have got the power, ample power, to find out what exactly is the truth. They can refer this matter to the relevant authority like defense in this matter to find out whether this person is actually a defense personnel or not. So this exercise was not done by the foreigners tribunal member, unfortunately. So because of that reason, he was held as a foreigner. Now, one thing is very clear. If you match with the foreign, uh, the investigation report of Mr. Chandramal Das, with the written statement that uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Sanaula submitted, there was a huge mismatch. So with this mismatch only and uh, with little bit of due diligence, the whole matter, the whole truth could have been called out by the FT member by virtue okay. of section 30 of the CPC. And after that, to saying that there is no cause of action, so this could have been dropped then and there. That okay. much power, uh, FT members would okay. definitely have. And right. this is held I, by I, uh, the right, uh, right. High Court also. Absolutely. In, uh, some Absolutely. Burhanur, hold your thoughts. I'm coming back to you. Uh, uh, I, I don't know whether Dr. Samujal Bhattacharji is... Okay, we, uh, Samujal Bhattacharji uh, is back. Welcome, Dr. Samujal Bhattacharji. Question is, question is, uh, you know, uh, we have got 31 days for the NRC to be published. Question is now, foreigners tribunals also have a very big role. These are two <coughs> separate issues, but you cannot deny a link. My, my question to you, uh, in the last couple of weeks, we have seen several people who are declared as foreigners and sent to detention centers have been, you know, they have come out on bail because the high court and the due court of law have thought that, you know, they are not foreigners but Indian nationals. This has all happened because of the faulty investigation of the border police. My simple question to you, don't you think the Assam government or the Assam police should at least conduct an investigation as to how these wrong investigations were done? Because it's not a question of five people or ten people. It's a question of credibility. Uh, it's a question of credibility in the minds of the people at this very, very, these are very sensitive matters. Dr. Samujal Bhattacharji, your comment. Yes. Yes, I do agree with your uh, opinion. But at the same time, uh, we should be very clear that updating of NRC, that process and detection of foreigner, that th these are the two separate processes. Yes. Now, updating of NRC is continuously monitored by the Supreme Court of India. It is as far as some accord, but it is continuously as, uh, monitored by the Supreme Court of India, and we have only 31 days. So, uh, we should pass a message from today's discussion that uh, we should appeal to the uh, coordinator, all deputy commissioners, ADC, circle officers, so that we can have a Bangladeshi name free correct NRC. Right. This 31 days is very important for us because, uh, yeah, that is number one. Now, uh, these, the officers, they are they're working day and night, so we should, we should extend our full support to them so that they can, uh, they can, uh, they can give us a Bangladesh's name-free correct NRC as part of the directive of the Supreme Court of India. The second part, the detection of illegal foreigners. So, the, uh, after, uh, the, after the border police uh, uh, decides that uh, A, B, C is a foreigner or suspected foreigner, they have sent these uh, uh, cases to the tribunal. So it is first duty of the government of Assam, the home department, the border department, to detect the uh, uh, illegal foreigner uh, in a credible manner. That is number one. Number two, uh, whether that machinery is uh, foolproof or not. According to me, the whole machinery is not foolproof. 
Even we don't have the superintendent of police in East District to detect foreigner. Now it's a huge thing. So uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, tell you that the whole system should be revamped. The whole border, uh, border uh, department should be revamped. Uh, or educate manpower should be given. At least one superintendent of police should be appointed per district in the state of Assam. And whole message should be effective one. That is number one. Because the lack of, lack of people, lack of manpower is there in this, in this whole system. That yeah. is true. Number two. Number two, after, after that, the, the, the cases goes to the tribunal. Now the 100 tribunals are there in Assam. And it is as part of the directive to the Supreme Court, the Honorable Guwahati right. High Court appointed the members of the tribunal. Now 80 tribunals are working because in some tribunals there was some nekulas. So Supreme uh, Guwahati High Court had taken very strong stand. Now again 200 uh, tribunals will be set up. The process has already started as part of the directive to the Supreme Court. The Guwahati High Court had initiated Correct. for appointment of members Correct. of these this 200 <coughs> new tribunal. Yes. Now, now the whole process, the one part that is the border department, this should be revamped. Second part, the tribunal, as because uh, as part as, as part the directive of the Supreme Court, the Guwahati High Court is monitoring the whole process. Correct. So the, uh, we'd like to we like to we like to submit that the whole process should be closely monitored by the Honorable okay. Guwahati High Court. Uh, so Dr. Samuel Bhattacharya, hold the, on. The credibility of yes. the tribunal is also exist. Very true. Very true. Very important points which Dr. Samuel Bhattacharya has made. I would like to take the reaction of. Uh, BJP spokesperson, uh, Mr. Rupam Goswami. Rupam Goswami, you know, it's not a question of... You see, we are all in agreement. There is no dispute uh, by anyone in this panel today, at least, as of now, so far. Issue is, we have to detect and deport foreign nationals. First of all, you have to detect before you can deport. That's a, that will come next. Now, at the same time, you have to give protection to the Indian nationals. You cannot just throw some Indian national by mistake and identity <coughs> and things like that. That is not acceptable. Now, Dr. Samudal Bhattacharya has said that the Assam government must take due uh, uh, steps to revamp the border police so that adequate manpower is given. One SP border uh, to deal with foreign nationals and so on and so forth should be, and should be appointed in every district. So do you at least now admit that due to lack of manpower, due to lack of proper direction, due to lack of adequate human resources, the border police have at least made <coughs> several wrong investigations. This has lent a question mark on the entire system, on the entire exercise of detecting illegal migrants. At the end of the day, we all want that NRC should be free from uh, illegal migrants. We want the voters list should be free from illegal migrants. And we want the state to be free from illegal migrants. There is no dispute on that. Rupam Goswami, your observations. I agree. There are um, uh, not uh, sufficient manpower in the whole border police, uh, that's, I agree with you. And definitely, government has to look on it, and we from the party will request the government yeah. to give sufficient manpower so that um, the investigation should be done properly, the, that, uh, so that no Indian uh, should be harassed. And no foreigner should be absolutely. Uh, uh, I think I think that is that is a very reasonable comment coming from the BJP spokesperson that you know investigations have to be done properly, and he has accepted the the, the suggestion from Dr. Samujal Bhattacharji that manpower is a critical issue due to which the border police may have goofing up in a number of cases. I'll have to go for a break, but before that, very quickly, Prasenjit Biswas, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the government has to take the responsibility because it is not the bureaucrats, it is not uh, not uh, the judiciary, it is not anyone, but it is the political leadership that has to take the responsibility. Therefore, it is incumbent upon the political leadership currently ruling Assam to come up with uh, steps so that these kind of uh, lack of resources and etc., lack of manpower uh, does not affect a very, very important exercise like this due to which Indian nationals also should not be harassed. And who knows, foreigners may also find their names because of wrong investigations. Prasenjit. Uh, the, the issue is that even the uh, people who have given life in Assam movement, a person like Bajayanti Devi of Tejpur, her family members have been declared D voters. Uh, in Nogang, Fatima Khatun and Nurul Islam, who have been in Nogang since 1911, are also declared as D voters. After in, in NRC, their names are already appended. Now, now this kind of a process of creating uh, a kind of a legal anomaly a kind of a legal quandary for the victims is possible because there is no effective check and balance on the foreigners tribunal as well as on border police. 
when All people right. are able to produce documents, why border police is not restrained from picking them up as de-voter and sending them off to detention camp? There should be appropriate legal check and balance. That is the most important thing. Okay, legal, appropriate legal checks and balance. Uh, perhaps that the, the, perhaps manpower is the issue as well as, you know, accountability. These are the two issues. Uh, I'll go for a quick break. I, I'll go straight to Samajal Bhatshaji as well as Sayed Burhanur Rahman in Lakhimpur as well as, of course, our panel in the studio. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, Dr. Samujal Bhatshaji, uh, immediately after this, I'm coming to you, Burhan, or uh, Dr. Samujal Bhatshaji, you know, uh, we have seen the Assam movement seven, six years of mass agitation, independent India's biggest mass uprising, 850 martyrs lost their lives. Now, after, at the end of the day, we want Assam to progress. We want to emerge beyond all these issues. Now, can, do you think the NRC publication can end the foreigners issue in Assam? After that, can we concentrate on other issues? Because an organization like yours have to also concentrate all your energy to see that the foreigners are detected and thrown out. Now the question is, <clears throat> can we move ahead after the publication of the NRC? Will it end this issue? <clears throat> Right. Uh, uh, I, I do agree with your uh, uh, approach that uh, this, uh, we, we want a permanent solution of the vexed foreign national problem. Correct. Asu sincerely wants that these problems should be solved permanently, once for all. Because generation by generation, we are coming to the streets shouting for the solution of this problem. And solution lies in the Assam Accord. There is a solution, and solution lies in the Assam Accord. Now, the updating of NRC will be one step forward to have a permanent solution. That is not the aim. It will be one step forward. Yes, we want a permanent solution. And for that, we, sh we should have a time-bound action plan to implement a Assam Accord, clause-wise. Because detection, deletion, deportation, these are the three things. Then uh, providing constitutional safeguard to the indigenous people, sealing the border, giving, yeah. giving economic safeguard to the people, so, uh, protecting the tribal yes. belts and blocks, yes. trust and others. Yes. So these are all there in the Assam Accord. Right. We need a time, so, time clause-wise, clause-wise, time-bound action plan. Clause-wise, time-bound action plan. I'm repeating again. Plan. This, this, uh, this updating of NRC will be step forward to have a permanent solution. Very, very true. It will be a step forward. Uh, I'm coming to my panel in the studio, but Burhanur, uh, you know, uh, you see, the 40 lakh people did not find their names in the final draft list. Now suddenly you find again more than one lakh people. Another list has come out. Now, there is an argument. I'm, I, I'm not endorsing this argument. I'm not rejecting this argument. I am only quoting what is in circulation in the public domain. There is an argument that NRC has become an exercise. This is a minority view. This is not the majority view. But I want, uh, I want your comments. Now, the, comment, the argument is this minority view says, minority means I'm not talking about Muslims. I'm talking about the limited number of people who are making this argument. Now, they're saying that the NRC has become an exercise uh, not to include Indians in the, in the, in the list, but to find out, uh, you know, make uh, foreigners. So that is the issue. It, it should have been an exercise to include people in the list because Indian national, list of Indian nationals. But it has become an exercise to find out foreigners. But that, there is nothing wrong in that. At the end of the day, we have to find out foreigners, isn't it? But where are these one lakh people? Their names appeared in the in the draft list. Their names did not find in the draft list. Suddenly, they have been once again put in the excluded extended list. So there is a lot of confusion going on. Uh, 
Yeah, see, the, as far as this new one lakh people uh, are concerned, they are basically those people whose uh, cases are going on in FT, that is Foreigners Tribunal, or who are already declared as a uh, foreigner by the mm -hmm. Foreigners Tribunal. As far as that part is concerned, that is fine. But the thing is that due to the lack of updation process with the election commission, many of these people are actually declared as Indian already by the Foreigners Tribunal. But because their database was old enough, their name were wrongly included in this new one lakh uh, category. So now I have, in fact, personally, I have got many calls. They're saying that, uh, oh, yes, of course, our matter was referred to the foreigners tribunal, but we are declared as for, uh, Indian. But still their name is uh, now included in this new list. So again, they have to go through a process of harassment. They have to go for hearing and they again have to go through this whole process. That, that part is there. But as far as the whole process of NRC is concerned, there are certain difficulties that uh, you have to appreciate because NRC for the first time in India, this exercise, whole exercise is going on in this scale. So being a, uh, a man-made uh, exercise, obviously there has to be some shortcoming yeah. that we cannot deny. The main <coughs> issue here is that uh, many people are excluded because the back end verification process was not done properly. Suppose a person who is giving a legacy of say Bihar or West Bengal, their yeah, verification process would not be done uh, now, at the appropriate very time. True, so very, very true, very true. also left out. Absolutely. So, uh, so number is exaggerated. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, uh, uh, I'm coming to you, Kripsalya, Akhilaranjan Dutta, the, the, the harassment, uh, you know, but, but at the end of the day, we must also appreciate that never before has such an exercise been undertaken. This is something absolutely new. It's a mega exercise. There is bound to be human errors uh, here and there. But at the end of the day, one also cannot deny the fact that uh, it is the illiterate people, people who do not have any access uh, to, uh, you know, I mean, the, the literacy. They don't know how things work, how the system works. They have to face a whole lot of problem. And now, now, the, now these hearing centers, what, the question being asked by many is that why should a person from a remote village in Barpeta, why should that person go to somewhere in Nogao or to Mangaldoy and somewhere to, to give a hearing? Why could not their cases be heard in the places near? So these are a lot of harassment stories coming out. I think, <clears throat> first of all, let me tell, asserted that NRC is a very, very critical document and we have been looking for the conclusion of the process that might not resolve the problem of foreigners for all time to come. But as Dr. Samujal Bhattacharya <coughs> has said, it's a substantive movement forward. Therefore, I also want that the process should come to a very, very positive okay. conclusion. As far as the harassment is concerned, I think here lies the responsibility of the state government, the political class, political leadership. And uh, we have to ensure that there is there, there do not arise any kind of suspicion regarding the whole process of the NRC. And that has to be ensured. And if we want to ensure it, I think the harassment issue that you have raised, that has to be addressed very, very comprehensively. No, and no. here lies the question of, yeah. that is why I was telling yeah. that onus of responsibility. It is onus not, of responsibility. onus of responsibility is no, very, no. very Kirip important. Kirip Chalia, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Samadhar Bhattacharya, I'm coming to you. Kirip Chalia, you see, uh, within 30 days, 31 days, the list is going to come out. Now, we will come to know how many people have not made it to the final list. Then, th then the legal process will start. Uh, and that matters will be heard by the tribunals, as Dr. Samujal Bhattacharjee has said, and we all know that 200 tri appellate tribunals are coming up. Those people who do not find their names in the final list on 31st of July can appeal before these 200 tribunals. Now, out of these 200 tribunals, around 60 tribunals will be located in Guwahati itself. Now, the High Court, the Honorable Guwahati High Court has already initiated the process of appointing the tribunal uh, judges and so on and so forth. But the issue is, this is a separate issue, that legal case will go on, they may or may not be happy with the tribunal's verdict, they might move the high court, those who have the means, that's a different story. Now, how do you prevent further infiltration? Because, as Dr. Samujal Bhattacharjee has said, we all want a permanent solution to this foreigner's problem. Now, how do you stop fresh infiltration? Now, after the Assam Accord, the border fence has not yet been completely uh, uh, com not yet complete, you know, there are porous stretches, there are riverine stretches, there has been demand for flood, 
flood lighting of those, uh, you know, border areas like the Pakistan border. Nobody is bothered about that. We have seen many governments at the center, many governments in Assam, which has come and gone. You cannot even fence 262 kilometers of the border with Bangladesh. Of course, we have other border areas with Meghalaya, Mizoram, and so on. That's a different story. I'm talking from Assam. So how do you look at it? What is your suggestion? See, I'll, I'll be very blunt in certain things. I have got <coughs> no ex to grind with anybody. But I have a little experience about what has been going on. We are product of, in fact, we came into politics because of this Assam agitation. And we are in the opposite camp. <coughs> now, let me tell you, I, I, I remember, I was very sarcastic when Samujjal and others were, you know, distributing sweets on the day that draft was published. And I have told him personally that this is not the time to distribute sweets. Because, you know, NRC, if somebody says that NRC can solve the foreigner's problem, that is, you know, that is hyperbole to the, uh, to the, uh, the extent of uh, being, uh, what, I'll call joke. See, and the foreign national <coughs> issue in Assam has been, a, has, a, has been a cancer. And it can't be done, uh, removed at a one stroke, at a, at a, you know, you know, when it, when it, with just one, one kind of drug. Let me tell you very frankly. We are talking about, uh, uh, I, mean, I, mean, I, I mean, I was listening to Samujjal very carefully. And he has been giving, he has been very much involved, giving all kinds of suggestions to the uh, NRC authorities and also in the courts. Well, okay, I agree. You need to have policemen. But suppose you give one SPs. No, will it solve yeah. the foreign problem? I'm just asking. I'm, just, I'm not criticizing anything. Yeah. I'm saying. Road ahead. Enough? Road one ahead. Come, no, come, no, come no, up with will, a solution. No, no. Road ahead. How, See, to, how to prevent further influx? Is See, it, is my it, belief, is I, mean, I may be wrong. I may not be as knowledgeable as you are. But I believe that the past determines the future. Without the past, you can't determine, uh, See, write a future. Listen. See, let us, let listen, us, let listen. us no, no, all listen. agree. Now, one sanaullah. <coughs> no, no, allow me to speak certain things. I said, I, you are asking my opinion. I have to be, give my blood opinion because these are on matters of record. And this issue, I'm going to tell you, going, it's, it's going to linger on for days. My, my political career is dependent upon what I'm saying now. See, first of all, don't you think it is only the, don't you think it is not the officials who are responsible for infiltration at one point of time? Don't you think some of these uh, problems that are, that are taking place also because of the corruption inside and outside, because of which the, the, the foreigners settled down here? Don't you think there was political games there? There is no doubt Nonsense. about that. So, so there is no doubt so, now, about how that. How but, did the uh, yes, now let me tell you. How did the foreign nationals acquire I, I documents? You. That is the key. I don't that know. Is no, the no, no, no. See, see but it's not only really a question of documents. It is not only a question of documents. It is a question of the political will. I have been very critical about the BJP <coughs> government, but I have been telling one and everybody, including the ASU leaders, that look, this is one government under which you can gain certain things. And this NRC exercise, let me tell you, it is not a product, although it could be a product in the, you know, by, by if you go on reasoning, giving reasons. But the original Assam Accord, in the Assam Accord, the NRC was to be prepared under the supervision of the central government, by the Home Ministry, not yeah. by Assam government. It has, now it is an exercise by, it is an administrative exercise by Assam government. Is that, is that, is, fortunately, because of ASU and all these organizations, Supreme Court yes. has come in and the, Supreme Court has given certain legal sanctity. But Congress, it's an isolated process. The but, Congress but did nothing. But even when we are, uh, yes, one, uh, keep, one yeah, second. You have made your point. No, 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 no one more point. One, 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 very important. Short no, of time. one point, one, one more very important point. Yes. Even when four or six persons are being victimized, so, okay. which, which can take place. Yes. There are MPs now, from neighboring states who are yes. saying that there is a I'll genocide be, going I'll on. Be, I'll be happy. Do you understand the I'll piece? be I'll be happy if you say today that you are at the wrong party and you uh, should apologize no, no, for no, being no, with no, a, a being with thing. a party. No, no, did every nothing. SMS uh, will rise above party on this. No, no, every no, no, SMS it, has to be. The, every the, journalist, no doubt, every policeman has to rise above this. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, you had a government which did nothing. Uh, to solve this problem for See, so many years. See, because of even the Congress government that the NRC has come. Even that should the not be denied. Let us not criticize no, no, the political but, but, parties. But, but I am Congress, saying dig out the loopholes. But, but, but the Congress... But the Congress did not. I don't want to get into. I don't want to get into criticism of Congress or ASU or AGP. The Congress did not. One can also say the AGP didn't do anything. Let me put on record. Did AGP do anything? The Congress did the AGP do anything? Did the AGP do anything, Mr. Wasbir Hussain? I just want one thing. I'm not here to defend the AGP. I'm not here to defend the Congress or the BJP. Nobody did. Only the ASU and the some poor poor fighters. Fine, 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 Kripp Chalia. Let me go to. Let me go to. I'm coming to you, Burhanur and Prasenjit. Uh, Ms. Dr. Samujal Bhattacharji, now the issue is, yeah. you, you are very right in, in expecting a permanent solution to the Assam uh, problem or to the uh, foreigners problem. But the issue is how to control Frex infiltration. Now, it will be a terribly difficult task to deport 
that we all know we may or may not say it in the public domain but we all know how difficult it is going to be to deport foreign nationals we have to come up with a strategy on what to do with these people whose name will not be there in the in the NRC. they can be distributed uh, so that is a, that we will talk about it but how to prevent fresh infiltration the border is not yet sealed there is no flood light on the border the river line areas we don't know what to do with such kind of borders river line tracks what is your what is your suggestion are you worried about this Uh, see, I am uh, not here to criticize any political party and the government because uh, we want permanent solution. But yes. I must say, that after signing the Assam Accord in last uh, in last so many years, uh, uh, who who were in the power either in Delhi or in Dispur, Congress for the longest term, then BJP for 11 years, AGP for 10 years, then Left Party supported government. Everybody was in power either in Delhi or in Dispur, but nobody had tried to solve this vexed foreign national problem by implementing Assam Accord. But I'm not here to criticize anybody, but we want solution. Everybody should realize, all political parties, all political leaders, they should realize, they should come above the political stigma, and they should uh, involve themselves to implement a Assam Accord. You're, I'm coming to your question. Solution lies in a Assam Accord. First, seal the border, 268 kilometers. Now the government of India has said, uh, because uh, after this formation of the government, the President Chief Minister had initiated a joint border visit. We went with the Chief Minister to the border. How long will it take? How, why should it now, take so long? Why uh, should it take so long? Why okay. should it be in the... It, it, right. It's taking an indefinite it's amount a, of it's time. It's an inexcusable... It's an inexcusable... It's a, it's an inexcusable crime on the part of the central government and state government who have failed to seal this... Indu Bangla border after signing Assam Accord. Now the, uh, the the former Home Minister has come and he has inaugurated some uh, t t t IT IT. They have here they they had they had introduced some IT uh, in the signing of border. Okay, uh, th that is essential. But physical barrier is a must in the riverine area. In other areas, physical barrier is a must. If the central government can seal the western border within three years, why not in case of Assam? Yes, that, is the, that is the question. That is the question. So we need that a date. The question. That what, is the what will be the date? That is number one. Number two, number number two, number two, the regarding deportation. We are discussing about the post seventy one. Why should we? Why should we? Because in the in the Assam Accord is very very clearly the, the, so to ex, express that the uh, post seventy one they will stay, and for that there is a provision of constitution safeguard. What constitution safeguard we got? Nothing. So we need not talk about 71, post-71. It is the duty 71. of the government of India to have a bilateral treaty of the government of India, government of Bangladesh. And Supreme Court has already directed. In the last hearing, the government of India said that the diplomatic discussion is on. Now what is the decision? We want to know that. There is a bilateral agreement and there should be deportation. Absolutely. See, we are very hard on that. Detect, now, delete and deport. Uh, Prasenjit, Prasenjit, you know, one thing we must all... At least this is how I look at it, Prasenjit. In the last two decades, India-Bangladesh relations has been the best under the government of, under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Let us be clear on that. If this is so, why is it not possible for the two countries to reach an agreement? What are we going to do? Can there be a joint inspection of these people whose names will not be there in the final NRC? Uh, what are we going to do with these people? Yes, they will move, They will have to prove their nationality. They will move the tribunals. They will move the courts and so on. It will be a long-drawn legal battle. But some of them may not move the courts because they themselves know that they are actually Bangladeshis. Now, will they go back to their countries, to their country of origin? How will you know their country of origin in the first place? So these are very, very difficult days ahead, actually critical days ahead. Don't you agree, Prasenjit? Uh, the diplomatic relation between India and Bangladesh, if it is to be kept in its current cha-cha mood, one cannot impose the idea of externment of suspected Bangladeshis back to Bangladesh, because that will not be acceptable to Bangladesh at all. Now, if there are some genuine people who are dubbed as Bangladeshis and proven to be Bangladeshis, Bangladesh has also accepted some of them. So therefore, one has to be reasonable in really striking a deal with Bangladesh if some Bangladeshis have crossed over illegally and settled in Assam, they could be deported provided it is proven beyond doubt 
and it is acceptable to Bangladesh. For that, a huge diplomatic exercise is has necessary. to be done. Now, Burha, Burha the second important issue yeah. is that we have to have we have to have an evolving jurisprudence about this. But our jurisprudence is still limited by uh, the putting the onus of responsibility on aspect. From there, we have to move into a reasonable jurisprudence where documents can be checked by various agencies. Even if one agency states that someone is a Bangladeshi, and if that person has documents, that to be really reckoned with. Right. Now, now Burhanur, you are a lawyer. You are a lawyer. The issue is, I mean, you know, OK, at the end of the day, uh, the Supreme Court is closely monitoring. It's a huge exercise. Uh, the NRC authorities uh, have done their best to come up with an NRC, which will be published on 31st of July, because the Supreme Court has said that there will be no extension and no more extension. Now, 31st of July, we are getting the NRC. Now, we are all saying that it is going to be a long drawn legal battle ahead for those people who will not find their names in the NRC on that particular day. How do you see things panning out in the days ahead, Burhanur, as a lawyer? Yeah, uh, after NRC, that is the aftermath of NRC, it's a very, very crucial period for everybody, for those people especially who, are, who will be missed out. It's because of the fact that although there is a provision for appeal in foreigners' tribunal, now in fact, as you have already indicated, that 200 uh, more foreigners' tribunal are going to be established. But the main and the most important and crucial factor will be whether these people are actually experienced enough to handle this kind of matters because now the experience criteria has been diluted. Like the previous year, it was 45 years, now it's 35 years and only 7 years of experience. And after that, there is one more very crucial stage, that is when a member, when a person is declared as foreigner, then under Article 226 and 227, they can challenge the tribunal's order in high court in the rich jurisdiction. Now the problem lies here, because once the lakhs of people will be excluded, then they have to, supposing that they have also failed in foreigners' tribunal, then L. Chandra, as per L. Chandra Kumar judgment, Article 226 and 227 is a root jurisdiction which is the basic structure of the constitution. So you cannot deny that right even against the uh, certain foreign people. Now when these lakhs of people have to approach to the high court, then you can imagine without, we don't have that infrastructure to handle this kind of situation. The whole legal system will collapse if this, you have to foresee what is going to come up. So you have to basically equip properly. Equipped now only properly. this hundred Equipped foreign properly. tribunal Absolutely. cases, our high, honorable high court is difficult to yes diffi difficult to handle it right. now <coughs> okay okay Burano, Burano, how they are planning how do you have explained it? you have you have explained time. you have explained it very well now uh, your concluding remarks uh, rupam goswami uh, you know i mean we have to really what he's saying that we have to gear up to deal with uh, a, a new new set of a problem that will emerge at the end of the day uh, you know even if they are foreigners you, there is, they, they will still enjoy human rights under the constitution because we are signatories to various human rights conventions and India is a very big democracy. Uh, now issue is, even if, they are, even if we know, even if we are confirmed that this set of people are foreigners, even, even then they will enjoy certain human rights and they will, and they will have the privilege of moving the courts as, as Burhanur was saying, they will, if, if the tribunals also declare them as foreign nationals, then the last option they will be moving the high court. High, high court. Uh, I mean, and then he's saying that, you know, if lakhs of people, thousands of people move the high court, then, then it'll again, you be a huge load on the honorable high court. Now, are you discussing this issue at any level, party level, government level? What are you going to do? You're concluding the box. And definitely, as the very rightly said by the Kiribda, the BJP is the government under whose rule you can get the justification for this problem. We are very serious about it both at the center and the state, definitely will come out with some solutions. We have already, uh, Honorable Chief Minister has uh, uh, having discussions on different issues related yeah. to NRCs and all, mm -hmm. and definitely will come out with good uh, solution to all this All this problem. Okay, okay, we hope for the best. Okay, Ranjan your parting words. Uh, when I was looking at, I have been looking at the whole issue of migration, particularly how has, has it been fought out in the courts. 
I have come up with a phrase, I call it adjudicated citizenship. As far as the whole citizenship question in Assam is concerned, it has emerged to be adjudicated citizenship. It's either in the foreign tribunals or in the Supreme Court or in the High Court, even the whole NRC process is, has also emerged to be an adjudication. Therefore, the issues that advocate has raised will be very, very significant. How do you settle it at the adjudication level, at the High Court or at the Supreme Court level and so on and so forth. But as far as the question of you know encroachment or you know crossing the border is concerned, what we have to be very serious about is the border management. And border management is not only about fencing. Border management is also about taking the border communities into confidence Absolutely. and also thinking in very terms of point. development of the borders as industrial zones, as tourist spots, and so on and so forth. Absolutely. Only by Fencing the borders, you, you can cannot never deal with this problem. Mr. This Mr. Problem. Very important yeah. point. So I'm, sorry to, I'm sorry to say that I Mr. disagree with many of the views given by my colleagues. My point is very clear. NRC, rightly done or wrongly done, will at least show that certain people are foreigners here. Now, this, this state, this, this, this Northeast, has faced a lot of discrimination because there were politicians who said at one point of time there was, there was not a single foreigner. There were people who gave, my own people gave statements that there were 40 lakhs for, foreigners in the first day. Next day they said there is not a single foreigner. Your own people At least who? Our own people, our SMEs people. I'm talking about our own sensibility. Let's not get into that. We are talking something constructive now, Wasbi. Now, first point is, once the NRC is completed, thanks to ASU and other organizations, we at least now will be able to say that, yes, there are foreigners which exist in Assam. And we need a solution. What is that solution? Let us first detect. Then let us delete. Then we think about deportation. There can be so many ways. Human rights, yes, human rights exist. But the biggest human rights victim are the SMEs, indigenous people, the Northeastern people. Their human rights cannot be at peril to give human rights all to right, them. All right, all right, all right. Now, uh, Dr. Samujal Bhatshaji, your concluding remarks. How, what is the situation that you are forcing? <coughs> what, is ne what needs to be done very quickly? Yes, we need a illegal Bangladesh's name free correct energy. It will be one step forward to have a permanent solution of this exponential problem. And uh, I do agree with the Kiribda because he has said that uh, human rights violation of whom? The, the crust of the problem is the, it's a threat to the identity of the language, culture, and identity of indigenous people of Assam and Northeast. That, is, that was the yes. crust of the problem, and today also this is the crust of the problem. We need protection. That is the, that, why Assam movement started? Because of that. So, that must be protected as far as some accord. That is number one. Okay. Number two, detect, delete, and deport. And I would like to I, I would like to highlight one point: that some of the human rights activists they have already started the propagating. They have already started their activities to protect the interests of the post 71 illegal Bangladeshis. Even but, the Supreme Court have a, they appointed yeah. amicus for detention yes. camp and but, for deportation. Thank you. And thank some you. of the I own name, yeah. but some of the human rights activists have filed. Petition in the Supreme Court. Even they, they have prayed to remove but, the CGI uh, from Burhanur, this Burhanur, deportation Burhanur, case. These are the conspiracies. These are yeah. going on throughout the country. Burhanur, so we cannot accept them. Bur Bur Burhanur, uh, yes. at the end of the day, anybody can move the courts, but at the end of the day, this entire exercise is an exercise to free Assam from illegal migrants, and it's very fortunately monitored by the Supreme Court. At the end of the day, the law of this land will prevail. Do you agree or not, Burhanur? Yes. yes, definitely. Definitely. There is absolutely no ambiguity on this point. The law of the land will prevail. There is absolutely no ambiguity on this point. But at the same time, there are certain administrative exigencies that they have to take care of. It because the steps and measures which are required to be taken at the micro level as well as macro level. Macro level, Supreme Court, Honorable Supreme Court is monitoring. But micro level, I am very, uh, it's very unfortunate actually to say that micro level is lacking. There are lots of harassment going on to genuine Indian citizens. So that small little steps could have prevented it. But unfortunately, for example, updation of that uh, list of the voters, li uh, voters list as well as the foreigners tribunals uh, declared Indian list could have prevented many ha such harassment cases uh, to the right, Indian right, right, right. Unfortunately, right, all these things are right. I'm running absolutely short level. of time. Prosenjit, so I'm running short right. of time. So Prosenjit, your parting words. Prosenjit, yes. 20 seconds. Uh, a, a, judi a judicious, reasonable, and humanitarian adjudication of citizenship is necessary, and detention camps must act in a more humane way 
any senior citizen who is kept in the detention camp, medical care and proper food has to be given to these people. So we have to be humanitarian. We are trying to sort out a serious national problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is no, no doubt about that. This is a very, very critical issue facing Assam. We all want a foreigners free state and foreigners free voters list, foreigners free NRC. And, and, and we want an exercise where no genuine Indian nationals are subjected to harassment in the name of detecting foreign nationals. On that note, I end this very engaging discussion on notice tonight. Good night and goodbye. Thank all my panelists for being in this program. Good night.